So here's an announcement for all of you watching and keeping up with this channel so far. While so far, all I have covered are tabletop role-playing games and things that are related to them, this includes the Cthulhu Mythos by H.P. Lovecraft which, before it became associated with Call of Cthulhu, started as a part of American literature. However, now I've decided to branch out into other topics and media that have had an influence on or are influenced by tabletop role-playing games such as the works of Stephen King and Dean Koontz, as well as various video games like Dead Space and Ragnarok Online to even films and TV shows like Event Horizon and Stranger Things. To say nothing of book series like Dresden Files by Jim Butcher and more which have gone on to inspire its own tabletop role-playing game. But before we begin proper, if you've enjoyed my content so far, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. The Tall Man The Man in Black The Hooded Man he who walks behind the rose. These are just some of the names used by Stephen King's supervillain Randall Flagg. I suppose that if you ask most of the people I know who are familiar with the works of Stephen King, they will probably tell you that the scariest villain he's created is either Pennywise the Dancing Clown from It or Cujo the dog from the titular book because of how realistic he is. That said, the villain Stephen King created that scares me the most is none other than Randall Flagg, perhaps the most monstrous of all his monsters because of how human he is. While he might not seem that terrifying, at least at first, the true horror is in how easily he can infiltrate various organizations and manipulate them into serving his truly horrific will. He is both an antichrist figure and a possible avatar of Nyarlathotep himself from the stories of H.P. Lovecraft, all rolled into one. In the novel The Stand, one of Stephen King's longest books alongside it, Randall Flagg is an antichrist figure, appearing as the world dies from the superflu or Captain Trips as it is called in the book. He came forth to mislead people and bring forth a civilization of evil and oppression. At the start of the book, he appears as just another man and recounts various instances where he infiltrated various groups, often dangerous ones at that, despite possibly not being human at all. For one thing, he remembers joining a riot group comprised of African Americans despite lacking African features himself. He also remembers marching with fascist neo-Nazis even though he never really believed in their ideals. Then there's the incident where he was accepted into a group of communist rebels when he himself is not a communist communist at all. Whatever the case, he has and always has been an instigator of violence on a large scale, causing conflicts and battles with messy and terrifying results. He establishes his empire in the shattered remains of Las Vegas, Nevada, and while his rule is both cruel and insane, many accept him there as leader anyway because the fear he creates also instills a sense of order in people. At the end, he is defeated by a handful of brave men and circumstances and consequences that pile up against him but, as shown in the epilogue, he is not yet dead. In the fantasy story, The Eyes of the Dragon, a rare work of fantasy written by Stephen King, although he did write The Talisman, Randall Flagg takes on the form of the King's Magician. In this book, his role is changed from a figure of legend and religious horror to that of an evil chancellor. However, this does little to dilute the evil the character is known for, and he is still the same agent of chaos and destruction that he is in all the other books he's found in. While he poses as the king's loyal advisor at first, he turns out to be manipulating the king's son and leading the kingdom known as Delane into further turmoil and misery. And worst of all, it is once again shown that he is not just any magician, but that he has come under different guises to the kingdom and caused untold amounts of grief and death either through violent sedition, widespread famine, and horrendous plague. Again, he is defeated at the end, this time by the loyal friends of a good prince but like many of his incarnations, there is no guarantee that he has actually been slain. Then, while he is never really shown in the story Children of the Corn, he is revealed to be responsible for much of the violence and death found in the town of Gatlin. While, as mentioned, 
he never really makes an appearance in the story, his presence can nonetheless be felt. His manipulation of the titular children, of how he uses the very religion that was meant to guide them into becoming good and responsible adults, and twists it into a nightmarish set of rules that leads them to kill everyone they know and love. I would say that it is in Children of the Corn that Randall Flagg here, simply called he who walks behind the rose is truly terrifying as there is so little of him that is shown and that his presence is mostly felt among the characters, specifically the children. Also, unlike the first stories mentioned, he is never defeated and he comes off less as a man and more as a force of evil, seeming more and more like the harbinger of an apocalypse. However, he is fully shown in the Dark Tower series, Stephen King's magnum opus, where he is revealed to be the right hand of the Crimson King himself, the ultimate evil of Stephen King's multiverse. It is revealed here that he has orchestrated many of the disasters and calamities that has occurred throughout the multiverse. He is a bringer of death, destruction, and damnation on many worlds, infiltrating governments and nations, and destroying them from within. However, it is also in the Dark Tower series that Randall Flagg is shown to be, despite his vast magical powers, just a man and a miserable one at that. He is also, much to the disdain of Stephen King fans all over the world, unceremoniously killed near the end, of which I will not reveal more. It can be said though that while the series did flesh him out as a villain, there are those who complain that Stephen King could have given the character a better end. Although. If you watch the Dark Tower film starring Idris Elba as Roland the Last Gunslinger and Matthew McConaughey as Randall Flagg, I can say that the old wizard did get a satisfying death. These are not his only appearances in Stephen King's multiverse though, and his presence is often hinted at in some places. For instance, he is hinted to be the instigator of a terrorist attack in Hearts in Atlantis, and the driver of the titular Buick 8 is thought to be one of his minions. His influence is also felt in other books including The Long Walk, written under Stephen King's pseudonym Richard Bachman, and quite a few others. There is also his appearance in the comics made by Marvel where he is shown to be the harbinger of the Crimson King. King's will, and exists more or less as something similar to Lovecraft's Nyarlathotep. Whatever the case, Randall Flagg has led countless youths astray and great men to their own demise often manipulating them into killing all those they know and love, often for the sheer joy of it. And while the Dark Tower series reveals Randall Flagg to be just a man with magical powers, he is still considered to be a terrifying figure and right hand of the Crimson King. Stephen King pretty much ended the character's arc in Dark Tower, but there are still those who hope that he may either make an appearance in a future story or novel that will once again feature the legendary villain. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Natural Juan, and I really hope you appreciated this short presentation of Stephen King's most enduring and endearing of villains. So, if you enjoy my content, please like and share away, and if you want more like it, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. I'll be featuring more Stephen King and book-related stuff in other videos, so stay tuned to my channel. This is your host, Natural Juan, bidding you all have a good one, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.